Okay, so first things first, go to Preferences, Gizmo, and select Local Coordinate. So this is just going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to moving the 2D patterns around in the 3D workspace. Then I want you to go to File, Open Project, and if you check the link in the description or the top comment, I provided this project file. So it's Female Project File, click on Open, click on OK, it'll load in the project file, and we can get started. So now on the right hand side of our object browser and fabric, I'm just going to double click over here and I'm going to name this scarf, press enter and I'm just going to change the color over here. And I'm also going to choose a different preset. So if you check the project file that you downloaded, I included the preset, but the preset that I'm using is called D Cotton. Now the preset from that folder, you just click on this folder icon and load it in, but I'm going to be using the cotton preset and now we can start actually creating the scarf. The sewing pattern for the scarf is super basic. Just go over here, hold down your left mouse button and select rectangle and then left click and this box will pop up. So for the width I'm going to type 1000, I'll type 1300 and then for the height I'm going to type 200 and press OK. So this is the scarf pattern, it's literally just a very long rectangle. So now this is where pins are really going to come in handy. So right now if I press spacebar to simulate that, you can see it falls to the ground. So I'm going to press Control Z to bring that back up. But if I go to pin box, you can see we've got this triangulated indication of our mesh. But if I click and drag like this to create pins, right, wherever a pin is placed, it's going to actually hold that garment in place. But now I'm going to undo that because I want to go to select and move. And I want to move this pattern piece behind the character's neck. And now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to pin box and I'm going to be pinning these corners together like this. All right. And I'm also going to just pin the top. And now if I press spacebar, you can see wherever those pins are, it's holding it. So now while I still have the simulation activated, if I go back to pin box, I can click and drag on these pins. So this is an absolutely fantastic way to style any garments that you're using. So if this happens, by the way, where it's not pulling it, just press Control Z, because sometimes you do get some simulation issues. But look at how easy it is just to drape the scarf around the character's neck using these pins. So a really fantastic feature. Now here on the back, if I right click, I can choose to delete a selected pin or delete all pins. I just want to delete that pin. And there we go. So make sure I've got pin box selected again. And this is how easy it is just to drape a scarf around the character's neck. Now I could select both of these pins or delete all pins, press simulate, and you'll see that it'll actually rest around the character's neck. So those pins really come in handy. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to extend this part of the garment. So all I have to do is go to edit pattern, select this line and just click and drag to the side. And I can hold on shift and it will drag it out uh, perfectly straight. So like that should be fine and then just press simulate okay so i've made this a lot longer and now i want to show you because i'm actually going to loop this around the character's neck and this is where pins are going to come in handy so i'm going to press spacebar to just stop the simulation go to pin box and i want to put a pin right on the end of this part of the garment press spacebar to simulate go back to my pin box and let's just move this up All right so move it till here and I'm going to loop this around the character's neck. And you can see just how easy these pins make this process. So there's so many different ways that you can tie scarves. And also if you pull a lot tighter on this region, just like in reality, the other side of the fabric will also get shorter. All right, so I have now looped it around because this is what I wanted. I wanted this loop fabric around the neck region. And let's just click on select and move so you can see what that looks like. So it's this nice thick fabric around the neck. Now, if you wanted to right now, this could be a style of scarf, All right? There's definitely scarves like this. So this is one particular style. You could just delete that pin box and it will fall in place. Right, but now I want to show you how I'm actually going to tie a knot. So now I also want you to select this pattern and bring down the particle distance to 10. So it's almost like it's subdividing the mesh. It's just going to allow higher quality on the garment. So if your computer is running slow, then definitely keep it at 15 or 20. But I can bring mine down to 10. Right, so now I'm going to show you how to tie the knot. 
Okay, so let's tie a knot. So I'm going to go to my pin box and I'm just going to right click over here and delete those selected pins. Press spacebar to simulate. Now I'm going to go back to my pin box and I'm going to put some pins on here and then just click and drag to move this up. So I need to create a gap over here. Let me just move this a little bit this way. I essentially need to make sure that this is suspended so that there's a gap over here so that I can loop this fabric underneath it. So now I'm going to put a pin box on here and let's click and drag. So you need to think the same way you would in reality. So I'm going up and I need to loop this fabric underneath this part of the garment. And now just to make my life easier with actually looping it underneath this part of the fabric, put a pin box on here and just push this up so that there's a, a gap underneath and bring this here. I know this might be a little bit tricky, but you can do it. Now, if you're having trouble seeing what's going on, I can also just hide the character by going to this icon and looking underneath here. So I need to pull this underneath. Now just reveal the character again. And there we go. So you can see it's looped over and it's creating this knot. Now I'm going to put some pins on the knot. Oh, just undo that. I'm put some pins on, on this knot over here and move up the knot till about that region. Grab this, pull it down. Now those pins that were previously, let me just hide the character again. The knots that were previously on here, I'm going to right click and delete it because I don't want that to be suspended anymore. Show my character again. Pin box is still enabled and I can bring this down, but we've got our knot where it needs to be. I can also put more pins on here and shape this knot if I need to do that. Let me actually delete that. So this is also another way that you can shape the knot on the garment. Now this piece over here, just bring it back down so it's hanging on the character. I'm actually going to right click delete selected pin, simulate that so it can actually fall back and be affected by gravity correctly. But we do have the knot on the garment which is important. That's what I wanted to show you. Go back to my pin box, move these further back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extend the length of this part of the garment. I'm going to right click go to delete selected pin. Now just make sure this doesn't undo the knot. Don't pull too tight on this fabric, you might undo that knot. And now I'm just going to go to edit pattern, select this line and just click and drag to extend it a little bit more. Because I feel like it's too short, unless that's the style you're going for. Maybe you want that to be shorter than this piece. Now press spacebar. And I just extended the length a little bit. Uh, but there we go, we got this nice big knot at the top of the garment. And that's how you tie knots using pins. I know it can still be a little bit tricky, but the pins definitely help you to accomplish that. So remember, you can always use pins for shaping as well. Let's say that you felt like this knot was too high. Go to pin box, maybe put some pins underneath. So just click and drag to put pins here. Go to simulate, go back to pin box and just pull this down. So now hold it down here instead. So I think that shape looks a little bit better. And uh, this is why I love this pin feature. It's fantastic uh, for just shaping garments and styling them. It's really, really good. Uh, like with this part over here, on this part of the garment, put pins over here and maybe move that. Cause may maybe I feel like there's too much of a gap over there. So move that in, maybe some pins here as well. Uh, but you'd have to do it in a way that actually looks natural, else it's going to create like this weird tension. Uh, and sometimes that's cool because then you end up creating tension, folds and all of that on the garment. So I just closed that gap that was visible.
and yeah so there we go this is how you can use the power of pins to shape garments and style them and in the process I wanted to show you how to create a, a scarf and how to actually tie a knot as well using pins also another tip if you wanted to you could add some fringes to the end of the scarf and to do that you just make sure nothing is selected go to add point and when you hover over this line right click and then you can go to uniform split and now you just need to choose a odd number so I'm going to choose 23 press OK and you can see it created 23 dots now I need to go to edit pattern and I'm basically just selecting every second line so every second line is going to be a fringe so just like this and just holding down shift and there we go and because it's an odd number I can now have a start and an end point now right click go to offset pattern outline and now I can choose the length of the fringe so 50 millimeters should be fine and I can click on create internal line click on OK so it created an internal line by every single fringe so if I double click here and then double click again it selects all internal lines then right click and just keep this in mind as soon as I click on this option cut and sew so this is cutting off the fabric and sewing it back on I'm gonna lose all of my pins so just remember where you place some pins because as I go through this process of right click cut and sew make sure you don't click simulate go back to pins and just add those pins back where they were previously so that you can actually retain the shape so I'm gonna put them all over here and then press simulate so okay at least I retain some of that shape so I'm just showing you how you can create some some fringes then you can select all of these fringes you can double click here to it'll, it'll turn orange and then you can scale this to a uniform scale so by making this value shorter than that value it's actually going to make it bunch up here a little bit like a little bit of a tapered angle and then you can have some some fringes on the end of your scarf if that's something you want but I think I'm going to stick with the original uh, design so at this point I'm actually done and now in Marvelous Designer 10 you have this button over here which is a quality render that actually allows you to view your garments with like these ambient occlusion shadows on them and you just get a much better representation of what the scarf looks like with these additional shadows and now one extra thing I would do is I would select the garment over here and I would actually add some thickness so maybe thickness of 2 and make sure that this icon over here we just add the thickness first this icon over here is on thick textured surface so when I actually look at the garment now there's some thickness applied onto it and then I would definitely select this and bring the particle distance down to 5 or even 3 uh, to get the best result so now don't be afraid to experiment with different fabric presets as well I know that this fabric preset called nylon featherweight uh, generates some more folds you can see just how much better this garment is also looking on a particle distance of 5 uh, but there we go so play around with different fabric presets see what you end up creating uh, but there we go that's the process for creating a scarf and using the power of pins to drape that scarf and how you can also tie a knot so I just wanted to mention something else uh, if you're wondering how I actually textured the scarf the way that you see it in the thumbnail uh, you can see that there's a fabric material on here as well as it's quite subtle but there's a fabric knit pattern which is a normal map that's been tiled and it's going across on here and you can see it adds a lot more believability to the scarf and I'm basically using one of my own products so I've created a product that is 56 fabric materials this is on my Gumroad page so you can search for Travis David's Gumroad or check the link in the description and I've created all of these fabric materials that you can use in your project so anything fabric related I've created this entire library for you to use so these are high quality materials at 4k resolution that are completely tileable and I've also got these displays patterns uh, which are fantastic so if you're also doing stuff related to fabric I've got like this fabric knit pattern over here which is what I actually used on the scarf you can see you can get an instant knitted pattern uh, but if you want everything I even have a mega bundle that contains 461 tileable maps it's everything there's tutorial showing you how to create your own patterns it's just jam-packed with content so this is a fantastic way to support me as an artist and to support the channel as well so that's the end of the tutorial now I just made my scarf a little bit shorter so I just shortened this part of the garment I just moved it to the left and I did that for this part of the garment as well so just a little bit shorter and this is on a particle distance of 3 so you can see we get really nice quality on here and with this quality render as well uh, placing all of these AO shadows I think the scarf looks really really nice 
Uh, but anyway, there we go. I've shared the entire technique with you. Let me know what you think down in the description below. And as always, I truly appreciate the support on this channel so much. You guys are super awesome. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials. And goodbye. Thank you.